What's up guys and welcome to Friday Flights. Should you buy a $25 cooler edition? I'll make part one of this video very simple. If you bought an Intel processor, you should probably buy a cooler. Where the water's just a little bit muddy though is over in Camp AMD. Now the stock Wraith Stealth cooler that the Ryzen 5 2600 comes with is actually a pretty competent little cooler even though it's all aluminum and very, very thin. Uh, today we're gonna be testing that against the Scythe Bayako. It's a 92 millimeter tower cooler with four heat pipes and promises to be quite the improvement over that Wraith Stealth. But first, let's see what's in the box here. Right on top of the box is our stock AMD hold down. Now what's really funny about this is not even the stock AMD coolers use that hold down bracket anymore. Uh, and what I'm talking about is these little plastic tabs that are on the back plate uh, that everyone takes off because they don't fit any cooler that AMD makes anymore. But there you go. We do have some thermal paste included and here's the cooler itself. Right off the bat, the aluminum fins look actually pretty fantastic. I like the design that's cut into the back of them. Three heat pipes sticking out the top of those aluminum fins and a 92 millimeter fan on the front, which is a four pin PWM fan, which I am very happy to see on such a budget cooler. Right out of the box, this does have your standard four pin Intel post mounts on there. But like I said, we're gonna be swapping that out for the uh, AMD bracket. So what do you say we uh, get to installing this in the PC? First things first, let's get some fresh benchmark numbers out of our Ryzen 5 2600 inside of the Corsair Crystal 280X. A lot of you will recognize the system. I've done a number of tests with this system already. We are inside of Windows on the stock Wraith cooler. And as you can see, we're sitting right around 40 to 41 degrees Celsius, which is about what I saw at stock speeds before when I did this testing. But it's always good to get a fresh baseline when you're testing a new cooler a couple of months later. So let's go ahead and throw a load on this thing, see where we land, and then we'll get the scythe installed. While we're waiting for the system to warm up, which it's actually doing rather quickly, uh, I'm going to go over real quick why you might buy something like the Scythe Biaco over like a 212 Evo. Now the 212 Evo is a great cooler, especially for the money. It's sitting right around $25. It's got four heat pipes, it's all aluminum, but it's a 120 millimeter fan. So should this cool better? Yeah, this should probably cool a little bit better. But if you'll notice, it's actually a pretty tall cooler. And if I put it down here, even with the bottom of the motherboard tray, you actually would not be able to close the glass panel on something like the uh, the Crystal 280X here. So while it's a great cooler for the money, for the same amount of money, you can get a 92 millimeter cooler and slap that inside, get what I'm assuming is actually gonna be similar performance to this in a much smaller package, but we'll see if I'm right here in just a second. And we seem to have leveled out here right around 85 degrees Celsius. Uh, you can see we're running at 3200 megahertz memory and we have topped out at right around 3.45 gigahertz. So we're actually not quite reaching the full boost potential of the 2600, which should be 3.8. So that is interesting. And you can actually see we did hit 3.9 here on most of the cores at one point, but we're sitting right in that 3.4 to 3.5 gigahertz range, which is pretty close to its stock base clock. So while the cooler is doing an adequate job and we're not throttling, 85 C's quite a bit hotter than I'd like to see my CPU running. And in fact, you see we hit a max of 95 there at one point. So let's go ahead and throw the uh, the Scythe on there and see if that 92 mil cooler with three heat pipes can do a better job than the stock Wraith itself. And against my better judgment, I am going to be using the stock thermal paste that came with this Scythe cooler. Uh, it is just bulk thermal compound. It's certainly not gonna win any awards for thermal conductivity, but most people who are buying a $25 cooler are not going to be spending an extra $15 on some Arctic MK2 or Icy Diamond or anything like that. So we're sitting here at idle. I'm just kind of waiting for everything to equalize from Windows booting up. I will say this actually seems slightly quieter than the Wraith Stealth cooler, which I'm actually a little bit surprised by because um, the Wraith Stealth is a fairly quiet stock fan. 
this might have it beat. And as we can see our idle temps here, we're seeing temperatures as low as 34.5, which is about five degrees Celsius cooler than the Wraith Stealth Cooler. Again, very impressive. Uh, typically idle temps on a CPU cooler swap, unless the cooler is terrible, you don't see dramatic swings. And I'm seeing a five degree swing there. Even the average is sitting at 36.3, whereas we were seeing, I think about 40.5 last time. So roughly a five degree Celsius improvement. Pretty impressive. But no one cares about idle temps. Let's get into Ida 64 and actually put some power through this thing. Well, thus far we're not climbing nearly as quickly, which is actually a pretty marked improvement. Uh, if you remember right, within about 30 seconds of starting, we were at 85C and it pretty much held there. We're sitting right around 65C with some flirting with the low 70s here. Uh, so thus far, looking pretty good. I want to point out as we're coming up on six minutes on this test, uh, with the Wraith Stealth, I noticed that uh, we were only sitting at about 3.4 to 3.5 gigahertz after CPU boost, uh, which is not the max boost for the uh, Ryzen 5 2600. Uh, and I think that was thermally limited uh, as again, we were hitting about 85 degrees Celsius there. Right now, we're sitting between 3.57 and 3.65 gigahertz across all cores. Uh, so we're sitting a couple hundred megahertz higher at a much lower temperature. We're sitting right around 70 degrees Celsius with only a peak of 77. Uh, and again, if you remember the, uh, the Wraith Stealth numbers, we were sitting at 85 with a peak of 93. So not an insignificant result here, uh, a little early on in the testing. I think I'm going to call it right about here. Uh, as you can see, our motherboard temperature is kind of leveled out right around that 65, 66 degree mark. Uh, our CPU temp hasn't really moved from that 70 degree mark. Uh, our max temperature is only 78 degrees Celsius, which if you remember, again, the rate itself, we were hitting 93 uh, on that for a max and about 85 once we leveled out. This is hitting 78 for a max and 70 once it's leveled out. I'm very, very impressed. Number one, audibly much, much quieter than the Wraith Stealth was at full load at these uh, the same load level. And we're actually boosted almost a full 200 megahertz higher across all six cores. So again, it's not just a, an acoustic and a temperature gain, you're actually gaining raw performance here. So I think the results speak for themselves. Number one, I'm talking and this system is, uh, is still running IDA. I, I haven't stopped the test yet. Uh, I just don't think it's gonna get any hotter or any louder, uh, but I'm impressed for a, a 92 millimeter fan with only three heat pipes and some aluminum fins. It's That's a pretty impressive result of almost a 15 degree drop uh, on the peak temperature and on the average temperature, uh, dropping from 93 to 78 and from 85 down to 70. Very, very impressive for a $25 buy. And this isn't just temperature and obviously acoustics, because this is much, much quieter under full load than the Wraith Stealth was. You're actually gaining a couple hundred megahertz of CPU boost here. Remember, we were only hitting about 3.5 gigahertz uh, across all cores on this, and actually we're dropping down to 3.4, which is the base frequency. On this, I'm seeing between 3.55 and 3.65 uh, for a full boost. So you're actually gaining some raw performance here as well. So the question I set out to answer, should you buy a $25 cooler for your AMD system, even though you already get a Wraith Stealth? And I'm actually a little surprised here. I think the answer is yes. Uh, the the Scythe Biaco, I, I like this cooler. It's attractive, it, pretty easy to mount. It, you actually don't even have to swap out the uh, the stock bracket that comes on your, uh, your motherboards. You can use the old existing AM3 clamp uh, bracket for this. Very easy to install. Uh, a couple things that I, I don't like, I'm gonna nitpick here a little bit. Um, the fan is great, but I would like to spend about seven to $10 more on this cooler, make it make it a 30 to $35 cooler. I'd love to see this in a push-pull configuration. And I know I can mount the fan on the other side of this. So Scythe, uh, if you would sell me another bracket, I'd, I'd be more than happy to spend another $10 on a fan and get a push-pull in this system. Uh, the second thing I don't like is the cables. Uh, Again, we're dealing with entry-level parts here. I fully understand that, but uh, it, it's a red, white, and yellow PWM cable with a white header on it. We're moving more and more towards black cables. It doesn't cost that much extra uh, from a, uh, an assembly standpoint. I'd love to see a black cable included with that. It doesn't even have to be braided, just a black cable. 
But overall, I would fully recommend the uh, the Scythe Biako if you've got a Ryzen 5 2600 or or similar level system, uh, especially if you have uh, like an i3 8100 or an i5 8400. I think this would be a great match for those CPUs and uh, certainly a boost over the stock coolers that come with all those systems. That's gonna do it for this edition of Friday Flights. Make sure to follow the Amazon affiliate link down in the video description if you're interested in picking up a Scythe Biako cooler for yourself. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and be sure to catch my live show, Talking Heads, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific. Me and a co-host sit around, drink a bunch of beer, talk about beer news and tech news for the week. It's a pretty fantastic show if I do say so myself. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.